So the snippet is generously sponsored by the Saka family and it's sponsored as well by Yelad Avram Foreman. We are on the bracha of Alat Tzadikim. We listed the many people that uh, we are davening for. Tzadikim, Chassidim, Zikni Hamcha, Beis Yisrael, the Pleita Sofreim. We invoke the Geir Eyat Tzedek, how much we rely on. We are inspired by those who transform their lives. Va'aleinu, we don't undersell ourselves. We spoke about Vihatul Recha Kamocha, Vachayachicha Imach. We have to believe in ourselves. Aleinu, we are worthy of Hashem's Rachamim Yemu Rachamecha Hashem Elokeinu. And what we're up to is the Saint Sachar Tov, the Chalabot Chemishimcha Be'emes. We ask Hashem that He should give Sachar Tov, a good and positive reward, to all those who believe in His name truthfully. And we asked a series of questions. First of all, Sachar Mitzvah Bahay Amalaka. We don't get reward in this world. And we're not like slaves who serve Hashem in order to get rewards. We serve Hashem not to get a reward. And all of a sudden we're davening every day three times a day and asking Saint Sachar Tov, is there a reward that's not Tov? And why are we worthy of a reward? And why are we believing in His name? Shouldn't we be believing in Him? We asked all of these series of questions. And we explained based on Rucham Kanievsky and others that we're referring here not to any mitzvah of bitachon proper. We're referring to something that's a prerequisite to all mitzvahs. I mentioned it to Machlokas Rishonim where you begin counting the Aseris Adibros, whether Anochi is even a Dibra. How can you talk about something being a mitzvah if you don't believe in the mitzvah? You have to believe that there's a Hashem, that there's a God, there's a Creator, He has expectations and demands of us. And now we can begin to investigate and list what does He want from us. But if I don't even believe He really exists, if I don't believe I'm accountable to Him, then what does it even mean? So bitachon is not an independent mitzvah per se. It's not like the others. It is the prerequisite, it is the foundation. And therefore, though mitzvahs we aren't rewarded for in this world, maybe a life of bitachon we are. And the reward for the life of bitachon, the sachar tov that we're asking for, is not, like in Pashas Bechukosa, we just had the Pashas here, Gishmechem bitam. it's not gashmias, it's not that we're asking for physical mundane things. The sachar tov is, the, the reward for a life of bitachon is, the life of bitachon. The reward for living with bitachon is the confidence and the clarity and the strength to be able to endure whatever life throws our way. That's the sachar tov, that's the good reward. The sachar tov is koman David rachmana, the tov avid. The sachar, the reward for bitachon is tov, is to see that everything that happens in life is for the good. Without bitachon, this is bad, this is miserable, this is terrible, the universe is so unfair to me, this is so random, this is such chance, this is so... But a person who is boteach b'shimcha b'emes, a person who lives, who has a bitachon in Hashem, then the sachar is tov, the sachar is the tov of knowing that all that Hashem does, it may be painful, it may be unbearably painful, but it is by definition, because it comes from Hashem, it is by definition, it is tov. Why is it formulated that we're supposed to have bitachon b'shimcha? Shouldn't our bitachon, our faith, be in Him? What does it mean that our faith is in His name? So the Avud Raham explains that b'shimcha b'emes means that we believe in the truthfulness of Hashem's name. Rashi, at the beginning of Parshas Va'era, Hashem says to Moshe, Ani Hashem. Hashem introduces Himself, Am Hashem. And Rashi says there in the spot, Shehu neman l'shalim sachar tov ritzono that Hashem is trusted to give a fine reward to those who fulfill His will. So the Avud Raham understands that Abotchem B'Shimcha Be'emes means those who believe in the manifestation of Hashem's name, those who want to fulfill Hashem's will. Why do we call it Hashem's name? If you think about it, it's not only here in this bracha. We do so also whenever we talk about making a Kiddush Hashem or a Chalila a Chilal Hashem. Torah says, Losach alu Hashem kachiv and ikdashni besoch b'nei Yisrael. In Pashas Kedosh, the Torah tells us, interestingly, by the way, only invoking two options. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar points out, there is no third option. There's no middle ground, there's no power, there's no neutral. There's nothing that you do that I'm just doing it stam. You know, you might ask, why does everything have to be either a Kiddush Hashem or a Chil Hashem? Can't something just be? I'm eating, I'm driving, I'm going, I'm talking, I'm doing, I'm sleeping. It just is. Why does that have to be either a kid? Everything falls into either of and the answer Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says is yes, there's no middle ground. Everything and the way we do it and what we bring to what we do and the impression we leave and how we do it will either elevate the brand and advance the brand or it harms and it hurts the brands. Those are the only two options. So how do we refer to it? Make a kiddush Hashem. And make sure, protect, be careful. Class has a school trip. 
Don't stick your head out the school bus and make faces at the cars in the road. No spitballs at the museum because we don't want you to make a Chil Hashem. Why do we call it Shem? Kiddush Hashem and Chil Hashem means to sanctify God's name or to a Chil is a Chalal, to make a vacuum, an emptiness, a hole where Hashem's name could be. Why do we refer to it to Hashem's name? Should sanctify Hashem and not desecrate Hashem. And the answer is the same in both. We can't speak about Hashem. We don't know Hashem. Hashem is infinite and omnipotent. Hashem is the creator, the source of all existence. Hashem is beyond our comprehension. So we can't talk about sanctify. Hashem is not malleable. Hashem doesn't change. It's one of the Yud Gimli Karim, that Hashem is not, doesn't change. So I'm not sanctifying Him or desecrating Him. All we have and know about Hashem is how He manifests, how He expresses, how He appears, the access He gives us to Him in this world. And that is captured in the word, shame, His name. It's through His name that we know Him, through His name that we have contact and that we have access and exposure to Him. It's His name that we could sanctify and it's His name that we could desecrate. Of course, He Himself, we can't. And that's why the bitachon, the cholabotchem, what we're having is the bitachon b'shimcha be'emes. In what we know of Him and how He manifests and how He's metzamtzeng Himself for us to have a relationship with Him, that's where our bitachon goes. Why do Anshei Knesset HaGadola choose to invoke Bitachon and not Emuna? Chalabotchim b'shimcha be'emes. Why Bitachon, not Emuna? Why Bitachon and not Dveikus? That we'll pick up with Mirza Shem next time.